He did not stop creating. He did not stop being the creator. If you need a creative miracle, he's the creator. The narrow road is the more difficult road. But the narrow road is the one that leads to eternal life. I got a good word for you today. Hallelujah. Today's message is entitled, You Are the Church. You know, we come to church every Sunday, and we go inside of a building. But I need to let you know that the building is not the church. The four walls that you see when you come to church, that's not the church. That's a building. So you say, well, you're confusing me. What do you mean? What's the church? You are the church. You're the church. You're the church not made by hands. You are the church. And church, this is your time to shine. I'm going to read you something from Isaiah 60. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Church, it's your time to shine. It's your time to go out from beyond the four walls and begin to reach out to those that are around you. This verse in Isaiah it was a prophetic word of times that would come. And we're living in those times. There is darkness. The old King James says gross darkness will cover the earth. You know that there's great darkness out there in the world. There's many people that don't know Jesus at all. There's darkness that prevails in areas and all around. But it says that when there is great darkness, that the church is going to shine in great brightness. And it says that they will come to the brightness of your rising. As you shine for Jesus Christ, those that are in need, those that are walking in darkness will see the light that you have. And they will be drawn to the light. I don't know about you, but when I walk outside in the evening and I have my porch light on, there's always a lot of little insects <clears throat> flowing or flying around the light. Do you see that at your house? I'm sure that you do. They're attracted to the light. And the people of the world are looking for something real. Something real. And they're attracted to the light and to the glory of God that is inside of each one of you. Each one of you are containers for the glory of God. You are the temple not made by hand and built to be filled with the glory of God. We know that the glory of God once had its abode in the tabernacle. And the glory of God was over the mercy seat. And it says that the cherubims, that their wings overshadowed the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat. And the Shekinah glory was there. It was the bright light of God. And there was no other light in that part of the tabernacle, in the Holy of Holies. It was only the glory of God. But God doesn't dwell in tabernacles made by hands anymore. God dwells in the hearts of men and women and so his glory his Shekinah glory and his light is in us we just have to let it shine church you gotta let your light shine now is the time to let your light shine like never before Acts 17 24 and 25 says and God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and the earth and does not live in temples made by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as he has needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. We serve a God that lives in the temple of man. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, his spirit comes and indwells your spirit. And you become the temple of God. Hallelujah. And it says, and he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. That pretty much covers it. Everything else. 
That's healing and wholeness and happiness and joy and prosperity and everything else comes through Jesus Christ. Just like it says in Matthew, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added unto you. So remember that. And yes, I want to come in together and have church again. I want us to be able to see each other and hug each other. And, you know, texts are great and group me is great and online is great. But it's not the same as in person. And I know that. I want to hug you. I want to embrace you. I want to talk to you face to face. But until we can do that, we need to just connect as much as we can. But you are the light in this world. Even though we can't meet in a building, you can meet out there in small groups here and there and pray and come together. You can reach out to those that are around you. Make time to be with your family. <clears throat> it says in Ephesians 5.14, Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Also Romans 13, 11. And do this knowing the time. Know the time that we're in. This is a Kairos moment. This did not take God by surprise. I was thinking about this this morning in the time that we're in and how God prepared us for this time. Two years ago, the Lord gave us um, the opportunity to get an app for our church. Because of that technology, you're able to see the live stream today. Many years ago, we had the camera equipment and the, the live stream that we, when we made a TV programs and all of these things. And so God, I believe, has been preparing us all along the way. We have everything in place. We have all the equipment. We have all the technology. On the app, you can see your notes. If you uh, have your app, you can just click on sermons, and you can see all of the scriptures for today. And I know that God was preparing all of that for this time. And not only that, he's been preparing us for this time when we wouldn't be able to meet together, but we would need to be the church out there. It's time to step up. It's time to wake up. It's time to come out of darkness and into the light. Church, it's time to get your one foot that you've been leaving out in the, in the world to bring it back in. You need to be all in. It's not time to be half and half. It's not time to be wishy-washy. It's not time to be carnal. It's time to be all in. All in. Romans 13, 11, And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. I tell you, if this thing that's going on with the coronavirus does not convince you that we are living in the end times, I don't know what will. Jesus is coming back. I don't know the day or the hour because that's what the Bible says. But Jesus said that we can discern the signs of the times. And this plague that is in our world right now is a sign of the time. We are closer to the coming of Jesus Christ than we have ever been. We need to get our hearts right with God. It's high time to awake out of sleep. For salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Jesus is nearer to coming back than when we first believed. Last Sunday I talked about being the salt and the light. I want to remind you of that today. In Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? We're the salt. If we're not salty, how can we season anything? The Bible says that unseasoned salt or salt that has lost its season is not good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled in the street. When I lived in Oklahoma many years ago, when an ice storm would come, you know what? They'd put the salt out on the ice to, to melt it, and then the snow plows would come by and push the snow over to the side. We don't want to be just good for thrown out in the street. We are supposed to be salty. We are supposed to flavor this earth. We are supposed to make a difference in this world. Not just on Sunday, but on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. 
And nor did they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it shall give light to all those that are in the house. It's time to shine our light like never before. What you have is what people need. What you have in your heart, the relationship that you have, the peace that you have, knowing that you are secure in Christ is what the world needs. It's what your neighbor needs. It's what your family needs. It's what those that you work with need. They need Jesus, the source of their peace. So verse 16 sums it all up. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I saw something on a social media last night and I shared it on my wall because it just really spoke to me. It was a picture of a lady at Target. She had little kids in the basket and she's paying for her order there. And she didn't have enough money to pay for everything that was in her basket. So she starts telling the checker, um, just go ahead and, and put that back, put that back. The lady in front of her overheard and she turned around and she said, no, 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 don't put anything back. I want to pay for it. I want to pay for it all. Not just the items she couldn't afford. She paid for everything in the lady's basket. And in the picture, you can see the lady wiping away the tears from her eyes. That she's so touched that someone, a perfect stranger, would buy her groceries when she was in financial need. I tell you, I don't know about you, but that touched my heart. That made me shed a tear, and I'm like, I got to share that. That's what we need to do. That's how we shine our light. Maybe we can't get in big groups right now, but you can shine your light one person at a time at the grocery store when you're standing in line at this place or that place because there are lines everywhere right now. Everywhere there's lines to get what you need. Begin to shine your light wherever you're at and begin to just reach out to people and, and touch them right where they're at. Maybe it's financially. Maybe it's with a compliment or a smile. In some way, you can touch another person's life. Now, Jesus had a pattern. He would send people out two by two to minister out into the community. Mark 6, 7 says, And he called the twelve to himself, and he began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. Verse 12, So they went out and they preached that people should repent. And they cast out demons and they anointed with oil who were sick. And healed them. Everywhere, the, everywhere his disciples went, the Lord was with them and worked in them signs and wonders and miracles. Wherever you're at, wherever you step out in faith, I'm telling you, God will demonstrate his word for you with signs, wonders, and miracles. Remember the prophetic word that the Lord gave for 2020. The very last point was we are the hands and feet of Jesus. And before that, the, the next to the last point, it said that there would be an increase of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we would see the moving of the Holy Spirit not only in the church, but outside the church, beyond the four walls. This is our opportunity to make what the Bible says real and to believe it in our heart and to let it be demonstrated out in the public. Jesus sent people out two by two. Go out two by two and minister to those that you come in contact with. And you can pray for them. Pray for healing and God will manifest healing. Pray for salvation and they will get saved. Pray for peace and the peace of God will, that, un, that surpasses all understanding will come into their hearts and their minds. People are looking for something real. People are very open right now. Very open. People are afraid. They're scared. They're worried. Some people are in lack. And Lord, they need, they need somebody to talk to them. Somebody to give them an encouraging word. Somebody to say something positive to them. Somebody to shed some light on what's going on. And you can do that. And Jesus not only sent out his 12, but the Bible says that he sent out 70 Luke 10, verse 1 and 2. 
And after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before every face into every city, every place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. This was the reason that God, that Jesus sent out 70 more because the harvest was so huge. He needed more than 12. He needed another 70. And I tell you, he needs even more than that. He needs you of the harvest of souls of man. And verse 17 says, And then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now the point is that when the 70 went out, that they had fruit for their labor. They noticed that God was working with them. They were surprised that when they prayed for somebody to be delivered, that they were actually delivered. That's why they came back and they were rejoicing. They're like, Jesus, you're not even going to believe this. And Jesus is like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Just rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Jesus is saying that today. I tell you, when you pray for that person, they're going to receive what you're praying for. You cast out a demon, it's coming out in the name of Jesus. He wanted to demonstrate to them that they would have fruit in their ministry. You're going to have fruit. So I want to encourage you, step out. Step out behind the four walls of the church. Now is the perfect time to be the light and to shine and to bring the gospel to people because their hearts are wide open. They're entangled in the fear, a bondage to fear, a fear of death. And God wants them to be set free from that. We don't have to be entangled with a fear of bondage, do we? Those that know Christ know if anything were ever to happen to us, we know where we will spend eternity. Look at, with me at Acts 2, 44 and through 47. Now all who believed were together. They had all things in common, and they sold their possessions and goods and divided them all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So the first churches, the first churches, they met house to house to house, and then they would meet in the temple once a week. And I want to encourage you to do that. Get together in small groups. We're under a mandate of 10 or less. 10 or less. And we need to obey that. And we need to be safe. But you can get together with your family. And you can pray. You can get together with your neighbor. And you can have fellowship in your home. House to house. Just like they did here in the Bible. It says they had all things in common. Have you checked with your neighbors to see if they're okay? Have you called your family members? Have you called your parents or your children or your grandchildren? Do you have what you need? Do you know a widow in the church? Do you know a family who's in need? Families that suffer uh, or struggle with finances. Have you picked up the phone? Have you called them? Have you checked on them? Let's have all things in common. I tell you, if you don't have it and I have it, I'll share it with you. And I encourage you to do that with others that you know that are in need. I tell you, I'll, I'll trade you. Bartering's going on. I'll just tell you that right now. A friend of mine traded eggs for toilet paper the other day. I went and got uh, bananas for my mom. And when I brought her the bananas, she said, here, take this toilet paper for the bananas. I'm like, hot dog, I got more toilet paper. Amen. <laughs> I just had a lady text me right before church and she said, I was able to buy some eggs in bulk. Did you find eggs yet? And I said, no. She said, I'll bring you some to the office. 
And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Anne Marie and Barry went to Mexico and they got a lot of toilet paper. And they said, we're going to bring it and we're going to put it in the office. And if there's people that don't have any toilet paper, they can come and we'll give them a roll of toilet paper. Whatever we have, we need to share. However we can reach out. There's always somebody who's doing better than us and somebody who's doing worse than us, right? There's always somebody we can reach out to and somebody we can reach down to, so to speak, that we can help. We can always pay it forward. I tell you, that lady at Target, I bet the Lord blessed her in some way later that day. I can guarantee it because she blessed that lady in line. I want to encourage you to share amongst your family. Share amongst your church family. Share with your neighbors. Check on them. Make sure that they're okay, especially the elderly. It's been hard for them to get out. It's been hard for a lot of people to get the essentials, especially those things to combat the, the virus like Clorox wipes and hand sanitizer. You know, it's not right for us to have a stockpile of 20 hand sanitizers and our neighbor doesn't even have one. I'm sorry, that's not right. We need to share. We need to touch each other. We need to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. And it said that those were added daily to the church. I tell you, if you're reaching out, you're going to win somebody nearly every day. And you're going to add them to the church. You can say, hey, Join me online next Sunday or when the churches get to open again. Hey, join me at church. I'll pick you up. You can sit next to me. Hey, and after service, we'll go in the guest information center and you'll get to meet the pastor and you can have some coffee and pastries like we do every Sunday. But because of what they did, because they had all things in common, because they shared their bread, because they met together and they prayed, it says many were added to the church. Because of their acts of kindness, because of their acts of love, many were added to the church. I know a lot of people that don't go to church anywhere, and they need Jesus at this time. We need to, I need to, not just you, me, to reach out to our neighbors, our families, our friends, and those that are in need. Matthew 25, 40, the end of that verse, Jesus said, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. When you minister to somebody else, it's as if you've done it to Jesus. If Jesus were living in these days, I'm sure he would appreciate a, royal, a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> if you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. The least, the smallest thing. The Bible even says if you bring a prophet a cup of water, you get a prophet's reward. That's pretty awesome. And it's just a little cup of water. What do you have that you can bless somebody with? What's inside of you? What's in your hand? What is right that you have that's available? How you can bless somebody. If you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me, Jesus said. James 1.27. I love this verse. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. To visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. That's pure and undefiled religion to show love and kindness to those who are in need. Who's more in need than the orphans and the widows? But the orphans and the widows, it does, it's not just them. It's everyone who is in need. And to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Two things that we've been talking about today. We, it's time to not straddle the fence anymore. One foot in the world, one foot in the church. We need to be the church. We need to quit coming to church and warming a pew and being the church. And being the church in the outside of the four walls, Monday through Saturday. Every day of the week, not just on Sunday. You know, during this time, there's many people in many states that are quarantined. They're in shelter in place orders. They're really not supposed to go out at all, except to get food or certain people 
can go to work, but many businesses have closed. Non-essential businesses all over the country have closed, has closed, has closed. And um, many people are home. They're home with their children. All the schools are let out right now. What a perfect time to reconnect with your family. What a perfect time to teach your children how to pray. What a perfect time to teach your children to have faith. What a perfect time to sit down and have that family meal that you've been meaning to do but hadn't had the time. This was the directive that God gave Moses to tell the children of Israel and is just as pertinent today as it's ever been. It's found in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, or hear, church, Listen to what I'm saying, church. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them to them diligently to your children. They shall talk of them and talk of them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets before your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. This was a directive, a commandment by God to the children of Israel to teach their children the things of God. He said, when you get up in the morning, And as you go throughout your day, when you go to bed at night, you are supposed to teach the word of God. My principles, my commandments, my statute, my laws, my words, you're to teach them. You're even to to bind them onto your forehead and put them on the posts of your house. It's time to slow down. It's a time to reflect where are we. It's a time to take inventory. Not just of what you got in the cupboard, but to take inventory of our personal life. Take inventory of what's in your heart. Take inventory of the state of your family's condition. Take inventory. Slow down. Take the time to teach your children at home. Get out the word of God. Father's if, you, if it's a, a two-parent home, fathers, you need to get the word out. You need to open it up, and you need to read it to your children and teach them. Moms, you need to do the same thing. You single moms, you have a lot on your plate. You have to be mother and father many times. But you're the spiritual leader in your home, and you need to teach the word of God to your children. You know, throughout the week, have times where you're sitting down and you're teaching them. And talk about the things that they've learned through breakfast, lunch, dinner, because you're going to be together for a while. (laughs) You're going to be eating all your meals together for a while. Some of you haven't even liked each other for quite a while, and now you have to spend a lot of time with them. It's time to get that right. If there's aught that you have against your husband or your wife, it's time to get that right. Because the wrong treatment of our spouse, the Bible says, hinders our prayers. I don't want my prayers hindered. I need God to hear my prayers. Not only for me, but the prayers that I pray for you and for everyone else who needs a prayer. I don't want my prayers hindered, and I don't want your your prayers hindered either. Get your relationships right. Get your relationship with your children right. View of bitterness, unforgiveness towards anyone else. Get it right. Just pick up the phone. You know, the phone works both ways. Sometimes we're stubborn. We say, well, they haven't called me in I don't know how long. Well, the phone works both ways. You pick up the phone. You call. You make it right. This is a time of reflection. This is a time of slowing down. This is a time of evaluation of where we are. And to begin to cause some things in our life to align that haven't been aligning. Amen. Amen. I want to pray with you today as we close. 
Father God, right now in Jesus' name, I just reach my hands out to all of our people. If you're watching online, just reach your hands towards me this morning. Father, I just lift up our people here at Abundant Grace and anyone that's watching today. Lord, I just send waves of encouragement and waves of strength, waves of love in the name of Jesus, waves of your presence, waves of the anointing in the name of Jesus, waves of healing, Father God. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us would take this message to heart. And Lord, that we would just do some self-evaluation, that we would slow down, Lord, that we would make our relationships right in your eyes. And, Lord, that we would be the light that you've called us to be. Lord, that we won't just be wishy-washy with one foot in the world and one foot in the church, but we'll choose this day whom we will serve. And, Lord, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I pray that you make that decision today, that you and your house will serve the Lord. Lord, I pray your peace would be upon each and every person. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. May each of you feel the peace of God right now. May the source of peace just come in to wherever you are. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, whatever we can do to show the love of Christ to those around us, Lord, help us to do that, God. And Lord, we believe that we are the hands and the feet of Jesus. Lord, I believe that you are increasing the flow of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we might minister to those that are near us, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are working with us with signs, wonders, and miracles, Father, just like the 70 who returned rejoicing because they saw fruit in their labor. So, Lord, I just bless our people today. Say this with me. Say it to your family. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen.